World Rally Championship is in gear for a new 14 round continents over 10 stuff. The rally in the world, the Monte Carlo Rally, a baptism of fire and ice for the world's best rally drivers. This year, the Monte is 90 years old. The initial challenge was to get to Monte Carlo in the first place, then there were even points for driving the most stylish car. The Monte made rally drivers household names, names like Paddy Hopkins. the long run to Monte Carlo from all over the continent but still on the agenda an unpredictable mix of snow, ice and ash belt. Picking the right tyres for the job is half the battle. Low down in the valleys the roads are often dry and clean with maximum attack and maximum grip from slick tyres. But in a split second the stages can take on the appearance of an ice rink where only studded tyres dare to tread. Then there's full snow, maybe with ice underneath. That's the stuff that sorts the men from the boys, the conditions that for the last two years have given Finland coming back into the edge. This year, he's looking for a hat. Of course, it would be nicer to, to do a tarmac rally, but um, Monte Carlo is always whatever. Uh, I don't mind. We, we have to try to survive in uh, any kind of weather. Mackinnon's opposition is fierce, wearing number one for the first time since taking the 2000 title is Marcus Grunholm. He's never won the Monty, but that won't slow him down. This is nearly my first rally here, so I did it last year, but only five stages, so I want to have dry conditions to, to learn the rally. But it's the same for everybody. Peugeot start the year with a full hand. In their lineup, two French aces, Gilles Panizzi and their new signing, Didier Auriel. Four times a winner on the Monte. Ford will be Peugeot's closest challengers. They've taken on board Peugeot refugee Francois Delacour. At the moment, uh, I think the focus is a little bit better, but maybe uh, the Peugeot has done so big improvement on during the you know, uh, in winter, then it's difficult to say. But in any case, I was very surprised on the test with the engine and uh, the ending of the car was very good. Similar than the Peugeot ending. Also at Ford, three-time Monty winner and double world champion, Carlos Sainz. And the 1995 world champion, Colin McRae, who's not a fan of the fickle conditions. It's not, it's not difficult to win here. It's, you know, it's a rally. If you take a bit of a chance and you get away with it, you win. You know, there's nothing uh, special about winning Monte Carlo. It's just having a bit of luck with you. With the Jokers in the pack are Subaru's new boys, Wild Child Petter Solberg and Marco Martin. But Subaru's star is Richard Burns, runner-up in the last two championships and yet to win the Monte. I think normally the rallies are close, but if anyone is going to be decided by a minute or more, then, then it's Monte Carlo. Celebrating a century of motorsport, the Skoda team, headed by Germany's Armin Schwartz. The Hyundai team, drivers Piero Liatti, Alistair McCray and Kenneth Eriksson. And the newest team in the world's fastest growing motorsport, Citroën. Joining the rest of the teams at the season launch in the world's most glamorous principality. The stage is set for what promises to be the closest championship ever. Three days and almost 400 kilometers of the most unpredictable stages in rally. First up today, six stages near St. Andre de Val. 145 kilometers and thousands of heart stopping corners. But before dawn and before any action, the teams have a two hour drive into the Alpha team. As world champion wearing the number one for the first time, Marcus Grunholm was first off the ramp outside the Monte Carlo Casino. Next off, last year's runner up, Richard Burns. Like Grunholm, Burns has never won the Monte. Unlike the four-time champion Tommy Mackinnon, this year the Flying Finn is looking for his third win in a row. Oh, 
Drama already within sight of the snow in the Alps. The first retirement of the rally. Estonia's Marco Martin didn't even make it to stage one. Electrical failure, stranding the Subaru in the middle of the road. It appears to be something electrical or electronic. One of those gremlins that are really frustrating. It just came from nowhere, no warning. Everything has gone perfectly during the shakedown and so on, we have, so we have no idea, the engine just stopped. Throughout testing in the weeks over Christmas, the stages were both dry, not now. Heavy snow has been falling all week, in theory, perfect conditions for Finland's Marcus Grunholm. Carlos Sainz has won here three times in all sorts of conditions. Even though Colin McRae is regarded as the fastest driver in the world, he's never got to grips with the Monty. First on the road was not good news for Grunholm. A base of ice and a surface of slush left him clearing the road for the cars behind. On stage one, he was only 11th fastest. By stage two, he had bigger worries. The Peugeot was overheating and badly. Problems for the other Peugeots. Didier Oriol was second fastest on stage one and was leading after stage two. Jules Panitzi was fifth after stage two, slowed after whacking the back of his car, bending the axle. Richard Burns lost over a minute on the first 52 kilometres. Bad tyre choice and not enough aggression, or so he said. Left to fast left, minus long 40, slow medium right 50, medium left and medium left 40, medium right tightens to flat right 20, easy left in tightens. Peter Solberg though was bursting with aggression, he was third overall. Like Grunholm and Burns, the Fords were suffering by running through the thick snow and slush. Sykes was out of the top ten on both the first two stages. The tray was totally a bit better. He was eighth after stage two. His co-driver is three Nicky left Grist. line. And four left. And right, don't cut in four left minus. Into four right minus line, don't cut. Thirty. Four right opens long. Feathering the throttle, fighting for grip. Tommy Mackinac was seventh overall after stage two, but a puncher prevented him from climbing any higher. Fifth fastest on the first stage for the revised Skoda Octavia. Armin Schwartz driving it. But the free rally way in, the Skoda was found to be a kilo on the weight. The stewards will now decide if the German can stay in the rally or not. Hyundai signed Piero Lietti over the winter. The Italian was the fourth quickest on stage one before retiring with engine problems before the start of stage two. Alistair McRae was also charging in the other higher nine spot. Passed up by Ford, Francois Delacour in long season musical chairs, Finland's Tony Gardermeister grabbed a chance to drive a private Peugeot in Monte Carlo. He was quickest on the first stage, but a puncture then slowed him on stage two. Somehow Marcus Grunholm made it to the end of stage two, but his Peugeot was in bad shape. Marcus, a disappointing end to the rally for you, and very early. Yes, well, what can we do? It's, it's, uh, we had a problem with the water pump in the engine, and 
it's just you need to know. <laughs> How did that show itself, manifest itself, when you were driving, the problem with the water pump? Yeah, it was on the stage too, uh, maybe after 15 kilometers I started to feel uh, some, some noise and, and it was not so powerful the engine and then uh, water temperature came up to 140 and all the lights were flashing and, and we have to stop for seven minutes to check but I couldn't find anything so I decided to go to the end of the stage but we cannot fix it here now, it's uh, impossible. Richard, it's not been going quite to plan this morning. No, not not great. The first stage, I think, I went a bit too steady with the with the tyre, and um, well, I lost quite a bit of time. But it's Monte Carlo, and the, these things can happen. The second stage was okay. We had a little problem with the rear suspension, causing quite a lot of oversteer, but at least we're still going. Tommy, how have the first two stages been this morning for you? All right, no problems. Just uh, one little minor. We hit the right front. To the, to, to the one big rock and, and uh, so lucky, lucky nothing bigger broke. It was just a li little bit bent and maybe puncture, that's all. Colin, how are the first two stages gone this morning? Yeah, reasonably well, no, no problems, quite straightforward. Happy with the tyre choice? Yeah, yeah, I mean it was okay. It's difficult in these conditions, but it was, it was the same as everyone else, so we went wrong. It wasn't only the big names who benefited from running low down the order. Gianluigi Galli set past his time on stage two, but was then penalised for checking in at the wrong time at a checkpoint. Also in amongst the big boys, Swiss driver Oliver Burry. By stage three, Burns had picked up the pace. He was fifth and inspired by the retirement of Grunholt, who last year beat him to the title. Stage three was a rerun of stage one of the clean road on Carlos Sainz finally edged to the top ten. But the Spaniard was not looking like a man capable of scoring his fourth Monty win. Going even better, he was third fastest on stage three and up to third overall. The Scot is one of the bravest drivers in the championship. Necessity when the road drops off 200 meters, just centimeters from the wing mirror. Tommy McInnes is struggling to make up the time he lost on stage two. He was eighth quickest on stage three, but fourth overall and only seven seconds behind McRae. Delacour was the stage winner on three, almost 10 seconds faster over the 22 kilometers of ross -Giron. He might have been dumped by Peugeot, but at Ford, he's been warmly welcomed back, and it shows. Canizzi, though, was looking skittish on stage three. Halfway through the stage, he lost control completely. He flipped 40 meters down a ravine. Amazingly, Panizzi climbed out, but his neck was clearly injured. His co-driver brother, Hervé, was also looking in pain. Both were taken to hospital for a check. -in. Peter Solberg's speed continued to amaze. His driving style is fast and furious. This is the view from Solberg's second place Subaru. The co-driver is Phil Mills. Shot by right. Her control on the left side. Yeah. Didier Oriol had opened a 20-second lead from Solberg in his first drive for Peugeot. The Frenchman said he could win the rally, and he was looking good, until he blocked the rock at the end of stage three, ripping a wheel off. Didier, end of stage three, you obviously have a problem. Yeah, really the last uh, Titan corner of the stage. Okay. It was more slippery, I don't know, and just the car sideways a little bit too much on the back. We touched uh, the wheel, and the wheel was gone suddenly, and okay. no possibility to, to repair. 
suddenly all three Peugeots were out and for the second year in a row. Pretty light in the second Mitsubishi was ninth overall after stage three. And seventh was Armin Schwartz in the new Skoda. Alistair McCray was grinning like a Cheshire cat, pleased to be in the top ten in the remaining Hyundai. The forecast of midday snow was wrong, instead the weather stayed dry for stage four. That suited Richard Burns perfectly. He was second fastest and jumped into the points. He now looked much more at home, taking a leaf out of Solberg's book and attacking the twisty stages. Carlos Sainz often goes better in the afternoon. Today was no exception. Like Burns, he seemed to revel in the drier conditions. He was fourth on stage four and fourth overall. The sweat on his brow showed his commitment. Fastest though on stage four, Trubo, was Colin McRae. With the Peugeots gone, he knew he had a chance at his first win on the Monte. Francois Delacour was again on the pace. There's nothing more he likes than flinging a car around the stubborn churning fence. But a on stage four annihilated his hopes of another stage win. Hey, on attack, huh? 75 meters at the grip. Sauf qu'avec gauche 105, long, long, ferme 100. Gauche 105, long, long, ferme 100. 100 meters. 100 meters. Droite 125, long, long, à fond. À 30 meters, gauche 100. Solberg was quickly pulling out a gap to Tommy Mackinnon. 10 seconds separated from second and third place with the day two thirds over. The threat of exclusion still hung over Schwartz in the lightweight Skoda. He seemed not to care though, after stage four, he was ninth. Back in a Skoda after a year of the sidelines, Bruno Thierry was tenth on stage four. The Czech team are now knocking on the door of World Rally stardom. Still kicking himself after losing the lead with a puncher, Gardemeister took out his frustration on the mountains. He clawed back enough time to win stage four, eleventh overall. Skoda, Hyundai have made huge advances during the short winter break, oozing with grip. The absence of Alistair McRae was 10th and not far off Schwartz. But as the fight for the positions went on in the hills, in the service area, Peugeot were packing up. This morning you were leading and now all three of your drivers are out. Last year we have been ridiculous. This year, not at all. But the consequence is always it's exactly the same. Zero points in 2000, zero points in 2001. The championship is on 14 events. We would like to start in scoring from the first. We didn't succeed. And we will have 13 events to go for scoring points and trying to re-edit what we had done last year. The car is still among the best maybe the best. Our drivers are very fast. They showed it at the beginning of the rally. And then due to the fact that in this rally, like in uh, each rally, you have to go to the limits. Well, both of them went a little bit behind the limits. An amazing first day, five of the, the works cars out. Are you fairly happy with the way things are going from your end? Yeah, no, I'm OK. I, I'm not enjoying it, but I'm happy with the result. It's, we've been, just been very, very careful and tried not to make any mistakes, and it's worked out for us. Two more stages today, changes to the car and to the tyres for these last two. What have you gone for? More uh, a, a racing tyre. The same, basically the same as we did last time. Uh, it's getting a bit drier and a bit cleaner. So, we'll see how it goes. Petto, you're having a good day today. 10.6 seconds behind Colin, second place for you. Yeah, um, it's quite good. It feels good, but um, fortunately we were a little bit unlucky on the two last stages now. We broke two rims and, uh, and uh, yeah, things like that can happen when you're cutting a little bit. But I'm, uh, I'm trying to be calm and don't do anything wrong, but anyway, it, it happens. But we were leading halfway through the stages. So the speed is there, I just have to don't get any pictures. 
What about the tyre choice for the next few stages? That is, uh, I think it should be easier. Now we go to tarmac tyre, which is kind of uh, intermediate tarmac tyre. Only little question is because uh, its uh, last stage is uh, already in the dark, and uh, if the weather is cold and uh, goes below below zero, it can be some ice, and that that can make some danger. Are you going to be pushing hard to catch Solberg and McRae? Are you going to take it a bit easier as it is the first day? Uh, I try to concentrate. I try to go faster now. With the French team gone, the fans put on a brave face. But the real bravery was in the cars. Stage 5 with Cobb and Castellane. 20 kilometres long and almost clean tarmac. The cars were now on slick tyres. Burns dropped time on the stage, but the problems elsewhere meant he was still fourth overall. Sainz was just six seconds off winning the stage. Second was enough to lift him to third overall. Amazing for a driver who was out of the top 15 after stage one. Sparks flew as the Ford bottomed out on the tarmac. Strangely, that was a good sign. There were fireworks too for Tommy Mackin and he beat Sykes on stage five and had clawed his way up the field and was now just 13 seconds behind Colin McRae. For the second stage in a row, Francois Delacour was slipping backwards. Again, a puncture was to blame. In as many stages, he'd lost two places. And stage five claimed the hard-charging Solberg. Well, we don't know the full story yet. I haven't been able to speak to Petter directly, but it uh, sounds like a small mistake, and uh, it paid the penalty. The final stage of the day, and the only one run in the dark. Colin McRae started Klumak looking invincible, but last year victory also looked his right until the final stage. Sykes, though, was fastest over the 14 kilometres. Gray took no risks. He was fourth fastest, relying almost instinctively to weave his way through the S band. And six right, 120. Four right plus don't cut. Into got four left. And six left and five right plus. And left over crest and four right minus narrows. Great discs glowing. Mackinnon looks as if he might be able to pass McRae for the lead, but the Finn lost 17 seconds in the dark. Tires with the problem. His teammate Freddie Lloyds didn't fare much better. So the gap at the end of the day. McRae leading by 30 seconds from Mackinnon. Third, just three seconds behind the Finn, Carlos Sainz. Burns in the sole remaining Subaru was pleased with fourth after a roller coaster day. Fifth, but with a possible exclusion hanging over him, Armin Schwartz. And sixth, Francois Delacour. Just out of the points, Freddie Leutz in the second Mitsubishi, Alistair McRae in the Hyundai, Oliver Burry the privateer, and Tony Gardemeister in the Peugeot. Colin, 30 seconds ahead of your nearest rival on day one, you must be quite pleased. Yeah, no, it's going very well. Um... The approach was just to be very careful and keep out of trouble, and it's worked, and the position is good. It's been okay. The first stage, all I did was uh, I just tried to look after my tyres too much, but since then, we've been close with the tyre choice, good good on three and four, and then this one a little bit brave. We, we shouldn't really have taken a slick, I don't think. It was a bit too, the road was a bit too dirty for that, but not the end of the world. We started terrible, very bad. We have not very good feeling at the beginning, wrong tyres driving too slow to try to save the tyres, but later on it went better and well, we are here. We will see tomorrow what can we do. It was a good day except last stage, I don't know. I don't, we, lost, we lost 20 seconds on, on one stage, short stage. It was, uh, I don't know what happened. Any, any margin is a good margin. Uh, it's not a lot. On this rally, it can, you know, 30 seconds can be taken back in one stage if, if we make a mistake or make the wrong tyre choice tomorrow. So it's. You know, it's it's not a lot. It could be five seconds. It doesn't really matter. But uh, the important thing is we're leading and, and the car's in good shape. And you know, we feel confident for tomorrow. So after a day of drama, Colin McRae leads. Can he keep it going in his first Monte Carlo rally? Join us tomorrow.
What if a moment standing still could be just as beautiful when it breathes? If some moments preferred to take their time, if photography moved us and we moved photography, and we could all see beyond the still. Moving photography in 1080p full HD. Pioneered with EOS. Inspired by Canon.